we want to solve the following problem. We want to find a power series f of x comma q in variables x and q that satisfies the following equation and such that f of 0 comma q is equal to 1. Okay, so what are some assumptions that we're going to make when we solve this? Well, first thing we'll assume is that we're working in with formal variables. So x and q are formal variables and we're working in the ring of formal power series in x and q. And we'll also interpret 1 over 1 minus q as the multiplicative inverse of 1 minus q. So namely, this is the geometric series, 1 plus q plus q squared plus so on and so forth, so that 1 is equal to 1 minus q times the geometric series. Okay, so let's solve this problem. So what, what information can we gather pretty easily? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let f of x q be the following series. So we're going to define the coefficient of x to the n to be a sub n. So here we note the dependence on q, here we write a sub n, and we remember that a sub n also depends on q. So it's not just a complex number, it's actually a power series in q. Okay, so we're going to write out this expansion and we're going to try to solve for these a's and figure out what these a's are. Well, what can we, what can we note first? Well, let's use our initial condition and see what our initial condition tells us. The first thing we notice is that our, our initial condition said f of 0 q is equal to 1. The other thing we'll notice is, well, if we plug x equal to 0 into this generating function we've defined, well, this is going to be a sub 0 plus a1 times 0 plus a2 times 0 squared plus so on and so forth. And we see that this is just a sub 0. So if we put these two pieces together, we see that a sub 0 is equal to 1. Okay, so we figured out the first term of this series. Now we'll make some room and try to figure out what all the others look like. Okay, so we've taken a second to record the information that we know. So we've recorded the fact that a0 is equal to 1. Now let's use our recursion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the series f of x q, the sum of a n x to the n, and plug it into my recursion, and let's see what happens. So on the left-hand side, it's just f of x q, so this is the sum of a sub n x to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 0, and what do we have here? Well, in f of x q comma q, I need to replace my x's with x q's. So this is going to be the sum of a n x q to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. And then finally here, I'm going to have x q. And now I need to replace my x's with x q squared. So we're going to have a sub n x q squared to the n power. And n is bigger than or equal to 0. OK, so let's clean this up a little bit we see that this is going to be the sum of a n x to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. This is going to equal the sum of a n q to the n x to the n, when n is bigger than or equal to 0, plus the sum of a n, and then we're going to have a q to the 2 n plus 1 x to the n plus 1, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, so this is what we get from plugging into our recursion. Now let's see what else falls out of this. Um, the first thing we might notice is we can maybe subtract this term over to the left hand side. So let's do that. We can write this as the sum of a sub n x to the n minus a sub n q to the n x to the n where n is bigger than or equal to 0 is equal to the sum of a sub n q to the 2n plus 1 x to the n plus 1 where n is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, but now the left-hand side is a little bit ugly, so we'll clean it up. This can be written as the sum of a sub n times 1 minus q to the n times x to the n, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. And the right-hand side is just, we'll just leave it alone. It's a sub n, q to the 2n plus 1, x to the n plus 1, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, first thing that we'll notice is that when n is equal to 0, this term, this 1 minus q to the n, becomes 1 minus q to the 0. So it becomes 1 minus 1, and we actually have that the n equals 0 term of this series is 0. So we might as well start indexing at 1. So we'll start our index at 1 instead. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to re-index the right hand side. I'm going to replace all my n's with n minus 1's. So let's do that. So we're going to have the sum n greater than or equal to 1 of a sub n 1 minus q to the n x to the n 
and on the right hand side I'm going to replace my n's with n minus 1's. So it's a sub n minus 1, q to the 2 times n minus 1 plus 1, x to the n minus 1 plus 1 which is n, and now I need to make sure I start with n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so what does this come out to be? Well, this comes out to be the sum n greater than or equal to 1. Let's simplify that power of q. It's a sub n minus 1, q to the 2n minus 1, x to the n. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to compare the powers of x on both sides. One thing that we notice is that this coefficient of x to the n has to equal this coefficient of x to the n, right? So what we have is that a sub n times 1 minus q to the n has to equal a sub n minus 1 q to the 2n minus 1 for n bigger than or equal to 1, since our series both start at n equal to 1. Okay, if we clean this up, we get a, a rather nice recursion, namely, we get that a sub n is equal to q to the 2n minus 1 over 1 minus q to the n times a sub n minus 1. So we get this nice recursion that the coefficients need to satisfy. Okay, so let's see what we can what we can do with this. So we'll clean this up and see, what, see if we can find a nice general expression for an. Okay, so let's see what we can make of an now that we have this recursion. Well, the first thing we'll note is that an, just as we, we've written down, is q to the 2n minus 1 over 1 minus q to the n, a sub n minus 1. Okay, now we'll apply the same recursion to a sub n minus 1. We'll see that this is q to the 2n minus 1 over 1 minus q to the n, so we'll leave that alone, times q to the 2n minus 3 over 1 minus q to the n minus 1 times a sub n minus 2. Now we'll apply the same recursion to a sub n minus 2. So we're, gonna, we're going to get q to the 2n minus 1 over 1 minus q to the n, we leave that alone, q to the 2n minus 3 over 1 minus q to the n minus 1 times q to the 2n minus 5 over 1 minus q to the n minus 2 times a sub n minus 3. And one thing we'll notice is that we can keep going with this. Eventually, we're going to end up with q to the 2n minus 1 plus 2n minus 3 plus so on and so forth, plus 3 plus 1, divided by 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, all the way up to 1 minus q to the n times a0. And we know that a0 is 1. All right, we know that this guy is just 1. Um, the other thing we'll make note of is that this exponent here can actually be simplified. All right, so this exponent right here can be simplified. Namely, we know that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So we end up with this rather nice formula, a sub n is equal to q to the n squared divided by 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, all the way up to 1 minus q to the n. Okay, and sometimes this is just written in shorthand q to the n squared over q sub n, where q sub n is taken to be 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared. It's just that denominator, 1 minus q to the n. Okay, so we found our a sub n, and now let's rewrite our series and kind of explore it a little bit and answer the question of why this is called the rogers ramanujan recursion. Okay, so we found our a sub n, and now we can write f of x comma q. We can substitute for a sub n. We know that this is going to be the sum of q to the n squared over q sub n, x to the n, where n is greater than or equal to zero. So this is the solution to our recursion with the given initial condition. Okay, so why is this called the rogers ramanujan recursion? Well, one thing to notice is if I substitute x equal to 1, I end up with the sum of q to the n squared over q sub n, where n is bigger than or equal to zero. And the thing to notice here is that this is the sum side of the first rogers ramanujan identity. Namely, this is going to be equal to 1, minus, 1 over 1 minus q to the 5n plus 1 times 1 minus q to the 5n plus 4, where n is bigger than or equal to 0. So this is known as the first rogers ramanujan identity. If we plug in x equal to q, on the other hand, we get the sum 
of q to the n squared plus n divided by q sub n, where n is bigger than or equal to zero. And what is this? This is just the sum side of the second rogers ramanujan identity. So this is one minus q, one over one minus q to the five n plus two, one minus q to the five n plus three, and n is bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is what we found. Um, let's clean this up and connect this to our motivated proof video. So in the motivated proof, the product side of the first rogers ramanujan identity was called G1, and the product side of the second identity was called G2. And there was this series that was defined, that was G3, and it was G1 minus G2 over Q. Okay, so let's kind of explore how this is connected to this recursion and how this type of G3 or this, this series G3 could have been pre predicted if you already know this recursion and you, if you already have some knowledge of the Rogers Ramanujan identities. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in x equal to 1. When I plug in x equal to 1 into this recursion, I'm going to get f of 1 comma q is equal to f of q comma q plus q times f of q squared comma q. And the thing to notice here is that this is just saying g1 is equal to g2 plus q g3. Rather, well, I guess this is not g3 yet. This is f of q squared comma q. But one thing we might notice is that f of q squared comma q is going to equal g1 minus g2 over q. All right, so this is our g3. Okay, if I had plugged in x equal to q, for example, I would have gotten f of q comma q is equal to f of q squared comma q plus q squared times f of q cubed comma q. Well, what is this saying? With our new identification of g3 being the same series as f of q squared comma q, this is now saying that g2 is equal to g3 plus q squared times f of q cubed comma q. So we end up with f of q cubed comma q. This is equal to g1, or rather g2 minus g3 over q squared. And in the motivated proof, this is what we called g4. Okay, so let's write down the general recursion now, or the general formula from the motivated proof. So if we were continuing this way, we'd be able to find g5 and g6 and g7 and so on and so forth. So proceeding inductively, we would see that plugging in x is equal to q to the i plus 1, we would get the series we called in an earlier video g sub i plus 2. Right, just so these are equal as power series. I know that this is moving away from the original intent of the motivated proof, but as power series, these are equal. And we'd be able to see that this recursion, g sub i plus 2, is equal to g sub i minus g sub i plus 1 over q to the i from the motivated proof, is just the following recursion. So it's our original rogers ramanujan recursion uh, with the appropriate x plugged in and rewritten in the following way. Okay, so we'll stop here.